Hey everybody, I'm Josh Wolf. I'm Jacob Wolf. And this is Hey Man. Hey Man. Hey Man. How you doing? Yo, you know, we're out here in, uh, where are we? Indy. Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Do you know what's crazy? And for real, what's crazy is that I, I don't know most of the time where I just was. I know where I'm going, but I travel so much when people are like, where were you last week? And I'm like, I don't remember. You know what's funny? I'm the same way with you. People are like, oh, where was he last? And I'm like, no idea. I know he's here this weekend, but I have no idea where he was last week. Your mom asks me at least once a weekend, where are you again? And I'm like, nah. Sometimes I have to look at the address on the phone. And yeah. I'm like, uh, Indianapolis. Yeah. But I will tell you, this trip in India has been amazing. Great weather. It's been really, really beautiful out. Shows have been great. Crazy energy. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and next year, 2023, this dude's coming. Every weekend. Todos de los semanas. Is that? Semanas is weeks. Yeah, semanas is weeks. What's weekend? Uh, semanas. Mm. That's week. Yeah. I just thought I'd say it again and see if something else came out, but same I guess still. every week is technically still right because I will be with you every week. That's true. Road, That's true. Farming. That's true. Yeah, muscle hairs. Yep, yep. Oh, good one, muscle hairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, um, and listen, guys, by the way, so Jacob and I were, and also um, still excited for you guys to see Family Tussle. Yep. I told you that the we pushed the editing back a little bit. Um, the editing was is taking place in Nashville, and the back and forth over phone and Zoom and all that stuff was harder. Mm -hmm. So I'm just heading into Nashville next week, and we're gonna knock give a couple of these motherfuckers out. Oh. The guys are doing amazing work, they are. Ama doing amazing work. But it, uh, it's just gonna be easier for me to be there. So that's gonna. Um, Speed pro pro propel that a little bit. We've taken because we took a little break until I could get there, mm -hmm. so that's why we pushed it back. Um, and but I was talking to Jacob about this pre podcast, and we thought it would be a fun thing to talk about. Like, we were talking about, I, I, I was talking to him about, like, uh, was there anything that you think I thought was good parenting that you thought was bad parenting, right? In that. It might be fun for us to talk about decisions that me and and his mom made that we thought was good parenting, mm. that he thought was terrible parenting, and then we can kind of talk it out, and I'll tell you why I was right and you were wrong. I mean, I got one right off the top of my head, and I know, by the way, you're not throwing mom under the bus for this one, because she wasn't there. This was just a you decision. Oh, Oh, okay. I'm so, excited for this one. Um, when I was, I think probably eight or nine, we were playing. I was on a we were, I was playing baseball. It was a summer day, uh -huh. um, and I was pitching. And I had just walked somebody, and I kind of got in my head. And you, you know, were, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you were eleven. Eleven? Yeah, eleven. And he came out to the mound to take me out, and I was like, no. I'm not, I was like, no, no, no. I was like, go back into the dugout. I'm not coming out. And he was like, you're coming out. He was like, it's time to, he's like, it's time to just hang it up. Like, you pitched great today. You're on a pitch count. We need you next week. You just, it's time to go. And I was like, no, one more batter. We have two outs. Let me get this out. And you were like, no, give me the ball. And I was like, we were arguing on the mound. I was like, no, like, I, I don't want to come out. And I was really adamant about staying out there and, and getting this last out and getting us out of it in it. And, I was told very adamantly also on the other side, no. So I handed him the ball, I stormed off the field, I went into the dugout and I like, threw my glove and kind of had a little bit of a tantrum. Not a little bit, a definite tantrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you came and walked me off the field, out of the dugout, past the bleachers and onto the street. And you put me in the car for the rest of the game. Yeah. For the last two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think that's bad parenting? Yeah, I don't think that's good parenting. I don't think it's like okay, awful okay, parenting. Okay. I think it's like bad parenting, but I don't think it's the best parenting. Okay, let me tell you why I think it was good parenting. Should I tell you why I think it was good parenting before you tell me why you think it was bad parenting? Sure. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Here's what I... First of all, a couple of things. One, you know I had a very strong no tantrum in public rule. True. You know I left your brother at the fucking grocery store. True. Okay. 
So like, I, I just didn't, I wanted it to be clear that under no circumstance that I think it was okay for you to throw, or any of the kids, my right. kids, to throw a tantrum in public. So the car was just right there. Yeah. True. You know what I mean? The like, car was right just right yeah, there. It was just right over the... Didn't you let me finish the game though? Like I was, I still could have hit. No, because here's another thing. I couldn't have. Look, man, I couldn't have anyone else on the team thinking it was okay for anyone to act like that, especially my son. You could have just sat me for the rest of the game on the bench. Why'd you put me in the car? No, dude, you needed to be removed from this because. You, be, dude, there's because you still would have enjoyed being on the bench. You would pass the point of me allowing you to enjoy the afternoon. I wasn't. You had enjoy being on the bench. You had entirely forfeited your right to do anything but get the fuck out of there. Because the less here, let me ask you a question: Did you throw another tantrum on the field? When you weren't there, yeah. Multiple what? times, actually. You did? Yeah. Remember that one time we were on the All-Star team and uh, the guy who was coaching us was like, oh, my son's going to start tomorrow and and you're not going to pitch? And I was like, why the fuck not? I was like 13. It was my last year. And I was Where like, was I? You were out of town. Huh. And, and, I was like, and I was like, what do you mean? And this kid was like, that's the best idea I've ever heard. And I was like, yo, shut the fuck up. And I was like, why, man? Why? Because I was the better pitcher. And guess what? We lost that game. You know why? Because the coach's kid hit five straight batters and then gave up a fucking base-clearing triple. And then walked the bases loaded again. And then he brought me in and was like, get us out of it with no outs. I'm like, oh, fuck. That was bullshit. Yeah, but man. And, And there was another time, the last, very last team I played on at Toluca Lake, where you were, you wanted to be a coach, but weren't a coach, couldn't be a coach because you were out of town a lot more because this is when like Chelsea career, like Chelsea was really starting to like uh-huh, uh-huh. happen. And the coach was, we didn't practice. You he know never what? held practices. We had a game, sometimes two games a week, and he never held a practice. You know what? The, like the outfielders couldn't even field ground balls. But but boomer, I put the ball down on the mound and walked off. But boomer, <laughs> but that's never. That's never. Here's the thing, and this is. So much easier said than done. But you have to really try not to let other people make you act a certain way. That is such that you know how competitive I am. Yes. And as a younger, like like right now, I wouldn't do that right now. But as an 11, 12, and 13 year old... I was like, yo, what are well, we doing? I want to win. This is let's, not the winning let's formula. Get, but let's get back to yeah, I did throw a good parenting, bad parenting. Because obviously good parenting. Because what did you just say? Around me, you never threw another tantrum. So it was effective, which makes it good parenting. Yeah, but even if you were there both times, I probably still would have thrown those tantrums. No way. 100%. Let me tell you something. You weren't the head coach on either of those teams. Yeah, but I would have pulled you off that team if I see you through. If I had told, if I had seen you, I would have loved for you to pull me off that Toluca Lake team. That would have been awesome. That was like my dream. Yo, if I had seen you tell a a coach, a grown up, to something like that. No, I told his kid. Oh, okay. So because his kid was like, it's the best idea I've ever heard. I was like, you can't control your fastball. You've hit like sixteen players in the last two games. Why are we talking about this? Yes. Yo, frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> However, phenomenal athlete the kid was. By the way, can I say outstanding? Like you're clearly still a little frustrated. <laughs> I'm also. There's another thing I'm frustrated about about my vet, but we won't get into that. Let me ask you a question. So, why do you think it was bad parenting? What What do you think would have been a more effective way? I mean, I just thought it was just kind of a dick move, in all honesty. Well, I mean, it might have been a dick move. I can't argue that. And that's the main reason I think it was bad parenting. What do you think I should have done? Left you on the bench? Yeah, I think you should just left me on the bench. To what? To... Oh, yeah, just embarrass myself. Yeah, but I didn't want that either, man. Why not? That's what I would have done. Because no spectacles, no embarrassing. You by yourself thinking about what you just 
did. It only made me more angry. Yeah, I know. Dude. I it didn't make me think I did anything wrong. It made me more angry the fact that you didn't let me sit there with my team and watch us win. Because we won. I know we won. That's why I wanted to keep pitching, so we were winning. Just wanted to get one more out. I Let it ride. Come on. You know I was the best player on the field at all times. I love how competitive you still are about these things that happened many years ago. Yeah. I love, but also I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> I don't think about it every day, but when it comes up, it does bring up some emotions, I'll tell you that. Yeah. You know what's funny, man, is that, like, as I've got, you know, I just accidentally bounced my packs, but those of you listening, you're going to miss it, but those of you watching, what's up? He might have just torn a bing, 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 bing. If he did bing, it for bing, two bing, more minutes, bing, he might bing, tear something. Bing, 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 time it. Hold on. We're at, okay. We're at 11, right? So start at 11 minutes at 13. 11 minutes. You want me to bounce packs for two minutes? You think you can? I don't know, man. It's going to be fine. Okay. So keep going, but you have to keep talking. Yeah. I just don't know if I'll remember to do it. It's only been eight seconds. I'm already getting tired. Yeah, I know you are. Holy That's shit. why I know this is not going to happen for two minutes. I'm going to cramp up. I got to tell you something. Like, this is actually might be my chest workout for today. This is the weirdest thing I have ever... I'm only at 30 seconds. How does Terry Crews do it? He's a do little larger think, than you. Do you think Terry Crews, like, sometimes he talks to his pecs and he has his pecs answer in syllables. He's like, how you doing, pecs? And they're like, we're doing okay today. Dude. <laughs> Listen, what did I say? Two minutes? Yeah, you're at 45 seconds. Oh, jeez. This is... They were uniform bouncing before. Now it just looks like they're having a spasm. Yeah, it does. It really looks it just like... just looks like they're going, ah, oh, like they're kind of having seizure, like a cramp seizure. Like I just got tased and my whole body's... Yeah, my right... Yeah, sometimes they go up at the same time and then like it looks like the left one's like a couple paces behind. Yeah, I might so start right, off. So it goes like uneven and then it goes even and then it just goes like every two it goes yeah. up. Yeah, it just like... So that, which one do you think is more effective right now, left or right? Sorry, for those of you listening, I'm so sorry, but you should check this out. This one. You think that one's dying more? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> I got it. 40 seconds left. Stop it! Oh, I'm so tired right now. <laughs> By the way, Guinness, if you're watching this... What's the record? I would like to know as well. Actually. I think I just set the record. I don't think you did. I did for sure. I think Terry Crews for sure can do this long. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I think the right one's dying out. Hold on. I'm going to start doing both at the same time. That seems like more energy. For some reason, it's easier. <laughs> you're trying to go with the rhythm with your heartbeat? Yeah, so let me tell you sick. something. Oh, I'm going to make it. Count me down to 10. Count me down. 10. 10 and a half. No, count Still me down. 10. 10. 10. Five. I mean, this four, is this is three, really, this was riveting. Two, one. Nailed it. Nailed it. I should have bet you. <laughs> oh, oh, that was not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. No. Yo, it, <laughs> I have to. <laughs> I wish I could do that because then we could have just had like a peck off and I, just gone like. I have to see, honestly. See, you could have gone longer. Tell you something. Winded? No, not winded. But in the pantheon of dumb things that I've done. Is that up there? I think it's top three. I don't think. What's dumber? What's what have I done that's dumber than that? Not 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 dumb as in I could have injured myself. But Other just than every just, high life ever. Yeah, you read children's books to to other adults on sh mushrooms. Yeah, but that was funny. And that was funny. also semi concerning. Was it? Yeah. Why? Why? Well, the fact that also you could never uh, clean up after yourself. I guess that was more annoying because I had to clean it up. When you say clean up after yourself, you make it seem like that I was like shitting on myself. You I mean, mean like, you did shit on yourself the other week and you didn't know for about two days. I didn't shit on myself. I somehow shit on my jeans. There was no poop on me. But you were wearing the jeans. So that's on you. Yeah, we went over this a couple weeks ago. It's on you. Um, But like, what were we talking about? I'm going to let you figure that out. Are you, are you no, just I, being a difficult asshole no. on purpose, or I'm not being difficult. Are you? No, are, I actually. Tell me, I actually don't remember what we we're talking about. Tell me because we're at 14 minutes. So tell me what the next 45 minutes are going to be like. Are they 45? Gonna, I mean, just tell me. Is it going to be you being an asshole? Because then I'll just talk about some shit I want to talk about. What? How am I being? <laughs> the asshole just because i told you you had one bad parenting day i'm the asshole no 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 i i actually don't mind you telling me that stuff at all i huh. think it's really interesting to 
I do. I think that stuff's really interesting. I think that like, um, because like as a parent, man, the only thing that you can do is what you think is right. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, really, the only thing that you can do is fucking cross your fingers. Like, when we took you out of Notre Dame, and I don't want to go over that, all that stuff again, um, but when we switched high schools for you, you know, you were real mad. And all we could do was, was cross our fingers and hope that we were making the right decision. That's half a parenting. It was the right decision, by the way. I agree with you. But that's half a parenting, man. It's just like, cool. Because also the same thing for one kid doesn't work for the other. That's so true. That's so true. And, and you find that out the hard way because you're like, well, I'm just going to do this because this worked last time. Doesn't and you work. do it and you're like, cool. There, that wasn't close. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I pa- parent, Those parenting books and all that parenting experts and... I think that's all such a fucking scam. Because they don't tell you that babies poop up. It's... The, the, there's nothing... Look, man. There's nothing... There's no two people are the same. So how are you going to map out what you should be doing with your baby? Right. That's right. You know, everybody's brain is different. Outside of, like, love and, like, obviously I'm nurture sure. and yeah, shit like, like that. that. But like all that other stuff, man. I remember when you were in preschool, and there was a um, woman who was really concerned that her kid wasn't as verbal as other other kids, and as like what she had been reading in a book where he should be. And I was like, I mean, like. He was also the most physically gifted. He was just growing in different times and different, you know, it balances out. Right. But like, yo, at two and a half, you shouldn't be too concerned. Like if the kid's 14 and and is not speaking the English, the English, then maybe, (laughs) maybe we go to a, maybe you should, you know, if he's, if, yeah, but like at two and a half, shouldn't be too concerned. Yeah, dude, that, that kid just found his butthole. There's a lot happening. A lot of things he's discovered. Yeah, there's a lot happening. So true. true. Um, we just watched that Little League World Series. We did. Congratulations to Kritosau, who's going to the championship. I love Little League World Series. I love. Can we try that one more time. I love Little League World Series. Good one. I love. Um, it's my biggest dream when I was a kid. Never happened. We knew kids that went to Cooperstown, but we never went to Cooperstown. Yeah, I love that. That. Um, Women's softball. Yeah, I love that they have a, a a Little League World Series for girls softball as well. It's awesome. Oh, no, I love, like... Oh, you did you know they have that, though? Yeah. Yeah. But I love, like... That that sport is fucking... That oh you that awesome. Oklahoma Sooners softball team is, awesome. like, arguably one of the greatest college sports teams ever. Who is your... Like, in, when you think of the greatest college sports team of all time... 2019 LSU Tigers. Is that who you think of? Oh, yeah. And if honestly, if I gotta give one out, probably like the '90s U. I yeah, I think of some of those UNLV basketball teams. Yeah, by the by, but like Larry Johnson and Stacy Ogman and a yeah. bunch of other people you've probably never heard of. But but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, those teams were like, they were. It was crazy, absolutely crazy. That LSU football team was just also pretty intense. But the U had some teams and, and Reed teams. Pretty crazy. Pretty nuts. Yeah. Pretty nuts. I, yeah. I, I I will tell you, like, I it's so weird. Okay. It's so weird as you get older. Because I remember this the age I was when I was like, oh, these are these kids. These are college kids. Yeah, these are kids. These my are age. kids. These are kids. They're younger than me. Yeah. Way younger. When I started to look at them as way younger. You know what is happening now? Pro, it's happening with pro sports now. Really? Oh, yeah, because there's a lot of kids who are dudes. Young kids are like your age people. Yeah, younger than me. Age yeah. People. And so I look at their faces and I'm like, oh, you're the young face. You're like seven. Yeah. Like, even I see some dudes and I'm like, you're like 12 and a half. What's going on here? Kind of crazy. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, but, but like, it really dawns on me when we watch college football. It really fucking dawns on me. We watch college football and I know it's a big business, 
But the pressure to perform on these fucking 18, 19 year old kids, I just can't even imagine it. Yeah. You know when I really realized it though? Huh? When I went there. When I went to LSU for a semester, I was like, and I walked by Leonard Fournette and I like handed him a basketball. I was like, yo, that dude is my age. What is happening That's here? That's crazy, right? What is going on? And like we were at the, we were at the rec center. He's a terrible basketball player. So, yeah, it's, he doesn't have to be. But you know. did hit a game winning shot from half court for fun. All right. So, well done. Um, but he uh, he had made a ball and I got the ball and he was like, and he asked for it back. And so I, I, I he walked by me and I handed, I handed it off to him and I was like, I handed the ball off to Leonard Fournette. Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> Yo, he. It was a savage freshman year for him though. Wowza. Until the Alabama game. It was a savage freshman year until the Alabama game. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened. That was it. That was just it. Like, like he had 200 plus yards for like four or five games, and then he played Alabama and averaged three yards a carry and was under 100 yards. And then after that, he never broke. He broke like 100 yards once more after that in college. Yeah, I think his body was worn down. He got cracked by Alabama, though. I mean, good God. Yeah, but they were giving him the ball like 800 times a game. Yeah, and the new, the new, you know, that 2019 team did something different because yeah. they had a quarterback who could run, who could throw, and they had a they had. You know, a a crazy running back duo who you had to watch out for, who could catch the ball and run after contact, and who could run after contact after getting the ball handed to them. So there was like so many, and then you had Jamar Chase and and uh, Justin Jefferson and on the outsides just burning people. Yeah, and then you had Randy Moss's son as a tight end. You had that O line. Jamar Chase and Jefferson were on the same team. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, they were they were one on each side. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. You have to double one of them. Yeah, and the other one's just going to get open. Jamar yeah. Chase caught like four touchdowns in the semifinals. Kind of crazy. Yeah, that's it. A... And Jefferson caught like three in the final. And that team is just the the linebacker core was outstanding with White and and did you oof, good God. did you tailgate up at all when you were there at LSU? Yeah. Oh my God, that's all I did on Saturdays when we had home games. We, I was up at 9 a.m. on the fairground by 10, and the rugby boys had already been there since 7. And so then, what, like, what's the tailgate like there? So it's the, the fairgrounds, like, I'm pretty sure it's first come, first serve. You don't, you don't get to buy or rent a spot. You come and show up and claim your space, and yeah. that's your space. So I party with the rugby boys because I knew one of the rugby players. I went to high school with him. He was in the hurdle crew. Shout out my boy, shout out my boy Aiden. Um, and so he was a senior when I was a freshman at Notre Dame, and then he was a senior while I was a freshman at LSU. LSU. Oh, nice. So it was a great end to find somebody that I could tailgate with, uh, because I remember I tried to rush, but I didn't end up on the list. Um, Thank God. Oh Jesus! And so I wasn't able to rush. So I didn't. The people who I thought I was going to hang out with, I didn't end up hanging. By the way, I say thank God. Not not that there's anything wrong with fraternities or the fraternity yeah, system was. yeah I, I it just was not wouldn't have been good for me no they, it would have i would have probably been put in some situations that i just wasn't yeah. i was really hoping that was not going to be a thing yeah but, but and it didn't and it, it all worked out for the better yep. and that's the second point um but so partying with the rugby boys all these guys like super super awesome dudes like there was never any hazing. They would just yeah, fuck with each other. They were just like, they were all brothers. Like, it was like, that's what I felt like. Like, I was like, this is my fraternity. Like, they would go and play at rugby on the fairgrounds as well. And I would just like, like, Aiden would text me. He'd be like, if you want to play, you can play. And I'd be like, no, I'm just going to watch. You know, those rugby parties and the rugby games were fun. I had some friends in college who played. The rugby parties it were was great, too. first God. time I had ever seen an anal chug before. Did they do keg tosses at yours, too? Because the rugby boys, the rugby boys and all the big guys, they keg toss it, so they'd sit there and they'd throw a keg over the top of their head. We saw that. Wins. Me and Kenny and Jack, we were at an Oktoberfest, not in October, but <laughs> where, where was that? Louisville? Me, Kenny, and Jack were at Louisville was, no, that was last week, Fort Wayne, Indiana. We saw a wiener funny, race. We're in the same state. Yeah, we saw a wiener race where they were like wiener dog races. I love that. Um, and then we saw the the over the head. Oh, Don't do that. Fuck wad. <laughs> over the head. Cake toss. I might have to wear a, a sling. I might wear a splint. Here's the thing. You should also maybe go get some surgery. Here's the thing. It'd be really good for you. 
I I think well it will look weird if I don't have the sling on stage because I don't want that. But if I just wear it, I off think if stage. you wear it before you go on stage and after you get on stage, and yeah. after you come off stage, I just fine. need to remind myself not, not to, to move your yeah. Arm. Yeah. So yeah. if you can move it as little before and then move it as little after, and then after the show, I'll ask them to fill up a bag of ice and we'll tape it to you. Oh man. Um. Uh, but yeah, but so they were great. Like the Roman parties were all also so much fun. Um, and the tailgates were great. So when I showed up the first weekend, who was the first weekend? Um, usually A&M was end of season and so was Arkansas was end of season. Um, first game of the season was somebody very small, if I remember correctly. Uh, not a ranked, it wasn't a big, big game, it wasn't a ranked team. Um, but it's still all out all the time. Every Saturday there's a home game. And so I got the text and they're like, show up here, um, and bring $10 in cash. And I was like, okay. So about ten dollars in cash. And they're like, so there's a couple things. There's a couple rules. And they're like ten dollars in cash every time you show up. We have five kegs, two things of jungle juice, and uh, and food. And I was like, sit. And I was like, just ten dollars for everything. He was ten dollars for everything and unlimited until it runs out. And I was like, that's pretty good. Seems like a pretty good deal. Yeah. And not only was it just the college kids, none of the college kids were cooking. It was all of their parents. All their parents pull up. There's a, a legitimate smoker. There's, they're making barbecue chicken. They're making ribs. Oh, it's like the real deal. It's like a cookout. It's like a. It's like a big. It's like a big, uh, legitimate barbecue cookout with everybody on campus, and you can go from tent to tent. Like fraternities have their own tents, and they're big tents, and they have a lot of drinks, and it's only like you have to be in the frat or know somebody in the frat. You know, a frat party, mm-hmm. pretty much. But it's like a one that's open and not with closed doors. Um, and then sororities had them, like, obviously we still had, like, our Greek row was pretty close to campus, so a lot of the sororities and fraternities also would have, like, parties at their place. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and they were like, so, you know, help yourself, but before you come and party with us, you have to do one thing. And I was like, is this like a hazing or initiation? They're like, it's more of an initiation, we're not going to hurt you. Um, but, you know, in order to jump in, you, he picked up two handles. One was Jaeger, and one was Fireball. And he said, you have to take a five to ten second pull out of one of these bottles. And I was like, that's you, it? You chose Fireball. Oh, yeah. I do not like Jaeger. Jaeger. I used to drink. Jaeger tastes like black licorice and I hate it. Dude, you know, I used to drink uh, my fair share of Jaeger, I'll say. Jaeger's disgusting. I couldn't help. I just loved, and I would drink a Jaeger bomb. I, this is you know, what's funny. I had a couple of Jaeger bombs when I was 18 and like when I first went to orientation yeah. at LSU. And that's why I stopped drinking Jaeger. I used to, Jaeger... I Bat. threw up on stage. Gross. In Baton Rouge, <laughs> they kept sending me shots. And I had told the staff, hey, make it just Coca-Cola shots. That can look like Jaeger from a distance. And yeah. The first shot they sent up was Jaeger. And I looked at them. And I guess I don't know how the miscommunication. But once you're on stage, you can't say, I told you to send up fake shots. Because the crowd will... Look yeah. at a fucking riot. Yeah. And if they send a shot on stage and you don't drink it, you know, it's a riot. It's either way. Because they it's just a drink good, drink yeah, good, yeah. Right? And I told them, I go, you send one more shot up. I'm gonna throw up. And I threw dude, that was and we're gonna get back to your story. That was the show. I used to wear this black leather Oh uh, yeah. I remember that bracelet. Yeah. Right? It was like this. It was thing. like a giant cuff. Giant cup, thank you. Yeah, yeah, giant cup. That's what it was. And so, it's like something pirates wear. I remember showing up to that gig in Baton Rouge for a sound check, and the guy says to me, "I got this big giant cuff." And the guy says to me, "He goes, hey, he goes, you need any, you need to know anything else from me?" I go, "No." He goes, "Okay, I just, I just want you to know we don't have a place for your bird." And I went, "What?" <laughs> and he goes, "Is the bird part of the act?" And I go, oh my god, it's not even, it wasn't even that big. I go, I don't have a bird. He goes, well, what's that for? He thought the cuff was like, it was like a falcon holder. By the way, the cuff is like this, it's like, Yo, it's like this dude, big. It was so That's funny. Super funny. Like somewhere during the act, I was going to be like, bird, now. That's awesome. Uh, I love that. Go go back to your fire. Um, but so I took a 10 second pull, it was more like a 15 second pull, a fireball. Um, and then every weekend we just went and tailgated, but it was Every weekend, someone ended up passed out on the floor, and it was never me because I was never going to make that mistake. 
Um, because I also knew we were sneaking alcohol and liquor into the game. So we were drinking in the sun in the student section. And then we were all going out after. So I had, as an 18 year old, I had to really like pace myself. But also at the same time, it was the most I've, I could ever drink. I can't drink like that now because I don't, I just don't drink that much. I didn't condition myself to drink like but that. But also adrenaline, you're at the game. You yeah, can drink Yeah, watching Leonard Fournette yeah, flip, fuck yeah. literally flip people over him was yeah insane. But by the way, I wanted to ask you something. We talked about this at breakfast with Sandy, and I forgot to ask you. I had asked Sandy, and I'll tell you what mine is. I had asked Sandy if you could pick one ten-year period, not an actual decade, like a, not the seventies or the sixties or the two thousands, a one ten-year period of music to listen to for the rest of your life, what would it be? I, excuse me, I would either pick 68 to 78 or 69 to 79. I, I don't remember when Prince started, but I, the, what I would miss is some Prince. I would love to bump into some Prince, but I can't sacrifice. I, I need late 60s Beatles, Stones, The Who. Yep. All those are really important to me. I mean, it's hard for me to say that I'm giving up grunge, and hip hop, basically. That's where I'm not giving it up. I'm basically giving up grunge and hip hop, but I'm I'm keeping it. I'm keeping the rock that I like and some fucking great funk. 2010 to 2020. Oh, so you're going an actual decade? Yeah, yeah, I am going an actual. Decade. Why? What? What is it that you? I can still have all like look. Look, there's like early to mid 2000s R and B is just. For me, it's just great. But I'm gonna. That's one I have. Who to are those people? <sighs> like, like a lot of early, like a lot of early Chris Brown. A lot of just like who else would I put in there? Um, who do I want to listen to? She's got a 2010s playlist that I love, but I'm trying to think of it. Um, but for me, like 2010s to 2020 is four of J Cole's albums. Mm -hmm. Like heart. It's like the start of his stuff. Um, I think I'm missing his first album though, which is a bummer. Um, but you know, I have most of J. Cole's discography in there. I have a main Kendrick discography in there, Travis, Future. Eminem. It really is all of the music that you like. Yeah, 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 and it's right before I think for me, like all of the new era stuff came in, like the sad emo rap. Um It's not the good Eminem. It's not the best Eminem. Yeah. But relapse or but uh recovery's in there. Yeah, that's true. Recovery is a good album. Um, and but right, that's about it. but also because your your but also I have Anderson Pack in there. Your single genre is in there. My yeah, my single yeah. like what I like what I consider to be like the hip hop and rap that I grew up on is that. But then also I have like I have a little bit of Fall Out Boy in there, and I have a little bit of Panic in the Disco in there, and I have a little bit of like roots ish stuff for me. And then I have like Anderson Pack, which branches out a little bit. Do you have MCR in there? Uh, when was Black Parade? 2008, I think. 2009. Yeah. If I, yeah, maybe. Um, but me. I can still do their later albums, which aren't the best in all honesty. Um, but I can do a Panic album. I can do a Fall Out Boy. I can do um, oh, also early 2000s. I'm missing like Blink and like all those like old Poppy and like yeah. Paramore, Paramore and shit like that. If I was um, if I was gonna do a second decade, I think it would be eighty four to ninety four. I think if I were to do a second decade, it would probably be like ninety five to two thousand five. You, you're get because when you go back ninety five, you're gonna get a little bit of the rock that yeah. you like, and then the early R and B for the early two thousand so Ninety five isn't the good grunge. You're not gonna get what's, what's the good grunge? Well, you're not gonna get the Nirvana you want. Was that early 90s? Let me think about this. I was still in college when Smells Like Teen Spirit came out. Oh, that's 90, 90, 91. 91, 92, I think. But here's the thing. like That's why I go back to 84 because then it, I get some uh, pre-high school, but I get my high school stuff. Right, but then I want my early 2000s, like R&B and pop and stuff like that. So, uh, and that like, Tipped at like 2006 if, or 2007. If I hit 80s, 90s too, I get I get the hip hop that I like, like the Run DMC and the UTFO. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. But I still Wait, Wu Tang's in there too, right? A little later. Uh, I like, still honestly, if I go 69 to 79, I think I do get some early early rap. Like I, I think it, Grandmaster Flash is 79. 
I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that answer to that either. By the that. way, I would love to hear your guys' answers. If you're yeah. going to pick, because for me, and if you're going to pick the decade, let me know what the deciding factor is. And so for me, the deciding factor of, of 68 to 78 or 69 to 79 is is, Beatles and Stones and be, Zeppelin yo, and, dude, Step Zeppelin, Hendrix, Beatles, Stones, Who? I, I get the Kinks. I get there's so much. I get Stadium Rock. I get bands like Boston. Do you what know what I mean? Wait, that's not that's Trump Trumpy Murphy's shipping them to Boston. Yeah. I'm shipping them to Boston. What? Tell me something right now. That watching them do that at Fenway with the Zach Brown band. Amazing. Where does that rank for you as far as live? So if you that well, Zach Brown concert, I think Zach Brown concert at Fenway is top five for me. Easy, easy, easy. Because easy. we also just have a connection to Boston and Fenway Park, and the fact and that we Zach were, Brown and Zach, yeah. yeah. But the fact that we were literally on the field for floor seats for that, like twenty feet from them, was. And that song just blew the yeah. fucking roof off. You, of that you, place. you know what's crazy is like you could you could hear the AO from probably all around the city. Dude, it was. Have we talked about me opening up for them at City Field? No, you didn't tell me at all. I didn't have to, you don't have a video of you opening for them? No. That's crazy to me that no one took a video of. There's no video evidence at all. Someone was recording their concert. Probably. They, you have to reach out to someone and be like, yo, I need a video of me opening for you guys at City Field because that's kind of a big deal. Do you know what's crazy? I don't have a video. I don't have a picture, face forward That's picture. what I'm saying. Like, we have, yeah. we're, you're going to have to call somebody because you, we're going to need photos and a video of that. Do you know like, what's crazy? And I'm going to tell you the honest truth, okay? It's not that important to me to have the video or the picture. I want to see it. Did you see that bug in that window? Yeah, have you seen the last seven? Jesus. There's been like seven of them the size of my fist. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was crazy. Yesterday we walked in and there was a praying mantis on our window outside. Yeah, dude, but that was like a, a a small commuter plane that just hit the window. Yeah. You should have seen the first seven. Like I said, that's not the first one that's hit it. Um, yeah, dude, you, well, let me tell you why it's not. Like, it's interesting. When I look at my social media pages, right? I post a lot, but I don't post a lot of what I do during the day. I don't post a lot of like me here or me. You know what I mean? I'm, I really like to enjoy. You try to take social media not as seriously. I just, I, I post my comedy and I post bits and, mm -hmm. but I like to enjoy my day. And right. it's not that, and I don't think I'm that interesting where, and so like, if I had a picture of me at City Field or I had a video, mm -hmm. I would never look at that video ever again. So it doesn't dawn on me to take it. Yeah, but so you know what I'm saying? Right, but you were on stage, so you couldn't take it. That's the thing. So it's not, you're more of a living in the moment guy, which I understand. And I've honestly become more that way. That's yeah. why I stopped posting a lot on Instagram. I'm just like, but I have so many good pictures that Iman takes me. Like, Iman is always taking photos of me. I have a great camera roll of things to post. I just, by the way, I'm so thankful that your that your mom also takes pictures and videos. Yeah, because I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I, I when I say like I didn't even dawn on me to ask somebody to take a video because I wasn't thinking. I was thinking how cool this is that I get to do this in for my friend mm -hmm. in front of thirty five thousand people. Pretty cool. Yo. But we should we should get a video. I would love to see the 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 you you introing them and then their entrance right after. Like I also just want to see it from my plug. All right, I'll ask. I would just like to see what it would be done. Yeah. But that show we saw at Fenway was awesome. Top five for me. I think top, so. top five. Also, because Dropkick Murphys came out. We all sang in. Then forty thousand of us sang "Shipping Out the Boston." In Fenway, shipping up to Boston. Their stage was like right on the Green Monster. Not on the Green Monster, but like lined up right next to it. It was awesome. And they played every song we wanted to hear him play. And he played two different sets. Yeah. The only song we didn't get to hear him play was Chicken Fry because he played that on the first night. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. But he played Colder Weather, which is... And Dress Blues. And he brought out that veteran. Always brings out the vet. Loved it. Always does. He, he did, did play Colder Weather. That song is like... It's my American Idol song. Is it? If I want to audition for anything, that's my song. Really? Mm -hmm. Have you ever karaoke did? No, but I have my own rendition of it when I'm in the car by myself. That's the song I roll up the windows to and sing by myself. 
Colder weather? I'm not embarrassed of it, but I like to be in my own little zone for it. When you say you have your own version, what I does just that mean? add there's some there's some different there's like different vocals that I add in certain breaks that just play into the next verse. So you you riff a little bit in between. It, only in like two spots. I by the way, dude, I fucking love that. But yeah. I love that. I like that song a lot. Oh, that's my, that's you my... have to stop hitting the wall and stuff. It's Is just it shaking? It? Yeah, dude. I haven't Every even seen time. it shake it. It shakes it and it makes the noise up through here. So I got long legs, man. Yeah, dude. No, you can put them up. You just, you can't keep hitting the... I like to hit the wall. Uh, my legs are big. They're going to hit a lot of different things. So I'm just going to keep it right here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a problem with you putting them up. Just the... Sometimes they like, I lose feeling in them. So I have to constantly move them. What do you mean you lose like, feeling? Like, you know, when your leg falls asleep? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like in certain spots with less blood flow, like if my all my blood is flowing away from my feet and down here, if my leg's up, uh, my foot falls asleep. Oh, yeah. So I have to like, <laughs> I have to move. On a plane's hard, man. I lose, I, my feet fall asleep and my knees fall asleep a lot. I don't even know what to do with it. Your knees fall asleep? Yeah, because I can't move the knee a lot. Or sometimes I'll be like up again. Yeah, it's like my shins. My shins are the ones that really like my you whole need, life. You need to start flying and get that first class treatment. <laughs> I've started picking the exit row. That's the way to go for you, dude. But sometimes the exit row is not always there. So I have to pick when I can. But also now I just try to fly on the window and not worry about my legs because I always take early flights. So I just sleep. That's my move the whole time. Uh, and I'm I, a window dude. A hundred percent. But I hate when you get, I hate when you get, when you're at the window and your window is a little too far up. So then where you're going to put your head is where the other window is. And it like, you, you go to like lean and you're too far in. Like, my pillow doesn't fit there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like I fall in too far and I'm like, fuck. On the exit row, that's there's a gap between the thing and the wall a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes it's weird. Like but I'm okay with that. Like if I can if I can lean back and fully extend my legs, oh, yeah. Gucci. Really? Yeah. Can you sleep on your back? Yeah. Just, I'm a side sleeper. Me too. But when I but if I can sleep, I'm like if I can lean against something, it like it imitates that because it, it fools my brain into thinking I'm laying on my head. Show everybody how you used to sleep when you were a kid, your baby. Fuck yeah, like just that. lounging. <sighs> just say, uh, ooh, I'm like one more ready. No. But what's do the neck one? I don't know if I can. No. That was good. Anytime the chiropractor would crack my neck, I'd be like, right after you cracked it, I'd be like, am I still breathing? Okay, good. <laughs> That's hilarious. Food. I love. I love the neck crack. It's so good. The neck crack? Yeah. I need to go see Billy so we get off. I need to go see our chiropractor. My back. Check. Do you like? Do you like going to chiropractor? It's my. Oh, it's the only doctor I enjoy. Is he make? It makes I recommend you, it for everybody. It makes you feel what when you leave there? So good. It makes me feel taller when I walk out. Oh, really? Mm hmm Because also, like, my hips, like, my legs get jammed up. So sometimes, like, if I stand, I can see that my knees are uneven. So he, he like, he, like, re-extends oh, so my So, like, legs. your legs are uneven? Mm -hmm. Like, one hip is higher than the other. I like that little move there. Mm -hmm. um, but so he, he, like, he, like, just stretches me out. It just, it fucking feels great. Yo, dude. I have, love it. Have you been to one of those stretch-out places where they go and they just stretch you? No. Jakey, jakeys. Because I'm not a, you know, I'm not a flexible. We're not flexible dude. people. You used to be, man. I used to be a very flexible person. You could drop into the splits both ways. Yeah, walking long way. This is not the right. But <laughs> walking long way and side split. Yeah, you could. Just, side split was the easier one. Was it this way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have no idea. They both know. look really difficult. Yeah, you weren't the one doing them, so I, I, I can't. When I put my leg, my arm straight, well, I might be more flexible now. Than you can I touch your toes right now. No. No? No way. But I, I'm more flexible now since I've been taking the Pilates. Yo, the Pilates it's is like... Pilates. Honestly, best workout I've ever, I've ever done. The yoga we did during quarantine is great. I had a good time. It was oh, just that's hot because right? we did it outside and my mat was colored black. In fucking Indiana Jones did not... He was like, that mat's for me, right? Yeah, he would lay under him. It was great. It was so funny. This fucking guy. We love him. He's really... Kind of an asshole. He's a menace is what he is. Yeah, he's a menace to society. He's when I say society, I mean your society. This dude is a complete menace. And he... But he's so... You know, he gets... He puts himself in timeout. 
That's uh, well, I mean, he's self aware, which is when nice. he does something wrong, he's like, Yeah, I'm just gonna hang on the crate. He's self aware, which is nice, dude. When I come home and if he's done something wrong, he puts himself in the crate, and I don't even know what he did. Sometimes I'm like, What'd you even do, dude? He, do, do. Like, if he, I'm sure if he puts his paws up on the counter when we're gone, he knows he's not supposed to. But when he gets home, he thinks we know. So he just walks right into the fucking... That's okay, though. I love it. Yeah, it's great. I, I need it. to teach Milo how to like his crate. He hates it. He Oh, he loves his crate. Milo fucking hates it. Not only does he love his crate, he loves his crate. And he will look through his little the bars on the side mm -hmm. at night until one of us comes and tucks him in. Silly guy. And when he tucks, tucks him in, he'll lay down and he puts his paw over his little head. Ow. Stop lifting your arm. <sighs> Lift your other arm. Why, why haven't we had surgery yet? All right, let's get out of here. Why haven't we had surgery yet? I'm gonna go get a. I'm gonna go get a sling. Sling. Do you want me to just bird scooter over somewhere and go get? It? That'd be fun. What time is it? Should we eat? Three thirty. I'm hungry. Are you? Starving. I might have a shake. I mean, I didn't eat that much of breakfast. I have a shit. Well, maybe. We can have like something small. Small to eat. Are we going to get a steak tonight? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the steaks here in Indianapolis have been... Good meat. I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might... Yeah. I uh, mean, I just don't know if fish... Okay. In, <laughs> fish in the middle of the country is my best move. Hey, the fish last night was great. Did we have fish last night? And Sandy and I did. We had a fish taco from Nada. And it was fire. Yo, that queso. I might order from there again just for that fucking queso. Yo, that crispy pork belly taco was one of the greater things I've ever had. And that churro donut was now. Oh, my God. I'm, yo, I, I would eat there again 100%, not even a beat. Let's talk about it. Yeah, okay. I'm done. All right. Hey, listen, everybody. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. The next week he's on is Cleveland. Cleveland. Yo, yo, Cleveland. Cleveland! If you're listening, let's come out, man. Let's make sorry, I changed your eventual. Let's make, let's make some more memories, and I would like to come back and not see somebody get shot. Yeah. please and thank you, Cleveland. What a good, we're gonna have a good time, yeah. man. We got we're showing up <laughs> Friday, Saturday, since there's no Thursday show because I have a Thursday show in Northern California. Those Fridays and Saturday, those are gonna, it's gonna fill. Go. Up. They're gonna go. So get there. You know what I'm saying? Get ready. We're going to have some fun. Big time. Can't wait. And, uh, and Portland in October. That's well. right. Big time. And maybe Dallas? If I can swing work. Guys, and by the way, at the beginning of October, I'm doing something I haven't done in a long time, which is getting in the car and going town to town for just for one week. But you people in New Mexico and West Texas, I'm coming for you. Hey, New Mexico, he's not there that often. Ever. Ever. Go see him. Fill it out. Josh Wolf Comedy and on, on all socials. Yo, thank you so much for the putting my TikTok over a million. Um, my Facebook is almost at two million. YouTube, obviously, still banging. And uh, now let's just get these numbers up on this podcast, everybody. Jacob and I would love to tour and come to yeah. your city and do some live shows so we can do some Q&As and hang out with you. Mm -hmm. So, spread the word. Tell a friend. Where you went to Jake friend. underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Um, Your legs are bigger than I thought they were. Yeah, I'm not a tiny guy anymore. I don't have terribly small. These are the strongest part of my body, though. Yeah, you're, those are like your legs are way bigger than I thought. I used to squat 290 pounds. Buddy, your legs, no spot. your legs are so much bigger than I thought they were. I got thighs. That's why, that's why I was thinking about the thigh tattoo the other day. I was looking at my thighs and I was like, I might like that. They're bigger than my legs. Yeah, definitely. I thought I, I thought you had complete chicken legs like me. No, I have I have good calves too. I have like hey, dude, your legs are like I got legs. I got good legs. Like this is a good. That's why I started wearing short shorts and I started brought the tan up because I like my legs. Yeah, dude, your legs are big. Yeah, thanks for staring at my lower body. That's weird. Shake under wait. <laughs> but wait, like I I I yeah, man, I'm. Yeah, I'm not, not like a like a. They're not like crazy big, but like I'm not like a small guy. I mean, yeah, I'm a small guy. It's like, been this past month and a half has been eye opening how much bigger you are than me now. I've been taller than you since I was a freshman. Though, yeah, so but like, you're bigger than me now. Yeah, stronger though, probably not. 
Not for 10 seconds, but after 10 seconds, stronger than me. Yeah. That's a, an endurance situation, probably. Those also, 25 versus... I can't really do anything after that, so... Yeah, that's all right. Um, but yeah, what I already said, socials are there. Um, tell somebody you love. That's all I got. I forgot to tell everybody something. What? I think we're back in the running for the OnlyFans for his feet. Oh, Jesus. Yo, I think we have finally convinced him that this is the move. Maybe. So please, for those of you who don't know, I'm getting him to start an OnlyFans for his feet. And we're going to dress his feet up, like his toes up, like Tony Soprano, Todell Beckham Jr. Tony Danza. Tony Danza. Tony Diaz. Toe uh, to Burrow, Shaquille Toheel. Toe Dirt. We're going to dress all these, his toes up. So please, if you can think of some good toe or heel or foot name puns, send them in. Why are my glasses crooked, damn it? Uh, if somebody could come up with a Polly Shore one, that would be great. DM me. I think it's Polly Tor. No. Anyways. Polly Tor a muscle. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It doesn't, it doesn't. DM me if you come up with one. And it, don't DM him. Do what I said. Leave the comments. And fucking DM. Do what I say, not what he says. Don't. My ear hurts. I don't know why. <laughs> That's an excuse. It does. That's I don't know excuse. what's going on right now. It's because you're old. It could be, but right now it hurts a whole lot. I think it's because you're old. Uh, maybe. Maybe it's the last... What if it just hurts before it stops working? Yeah, I was going to say, what if it just hurts? It's just, it, just... It, it hurts and then it just goes... Boom. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll let you know when we find out on what? the next episode of Hey Man. Later. That's how big her titties were. They made that noise through the air.